Airclips.com Good morning guys from Ardmore in New Zealand close to Auckland. Behind me this is beautiful old lady Betsy, a 1944 built former US Air Force DC-3 or C-47 if you will. And today, right now the aircraft is going to be taxied over to the hangar where we do the final preparations for a beautiful flying day together with Jessica and Jeff of the Fly DC3 organization here in Auckland. So an absolutely beautiful DC3 Dakota cockpit film waiting for you. I'm more than thrilled to invite you to this trip and now enjoy the sounds and sights of this fantastic old lady here. Alrighty. Thank you. See you on the other side. Yay.
Oh. Flaps are still down, Jeff, too. Okay guys, finally we have moved the DC3 and now we had to move her again actually for refueling. And it's very, we are very much on the, on the high speed track here and we need to rush a little bit, but I don't want to miss my chance to welcome our hosts here today, Jessica and Jeff. Hi. So the two DC3 um, owners, operators, <laughs> however we put it. Everything. Everything. And uh, we will fly now momentarily over to... Wittianga. Wittianga, <laughs> exactly. Another village with a W here. <laughs> and over there we will have some time for doing interviews, getting to know each other a little bit better. Now look forward to a quick takeoff here and a lovely first flight on the DC-3. And as it looks right now, there will be a total of three flights for this film. So really something to look forward to. Thanks a lot for having us today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, folks, very, very uh, warm welcome. We'll get away to Wittianga in just a few minutes. Can I introduce the team here, please? Uh, Andrew Cronin's with me this morning, and uh, he, in fact, is going to be uh, flying over to uh, Fitty City this morning. Charmaine's here to help us, in the, uh, both in the cabin and on the ground for the uh, scenic that we're going to do over there. And Christine's one of our new uh, cabin attendants. Uh, she lost her job with Air New Zealand, so she's come to help us out. And, of course, my wife, Jessica, who most of you, a lot of you, would have uh, had some contact in some form or one or another. And I'm Jeff, Jesse's other half. Uh, just very quickly, we'll get underway a little less than 20 minutes across to Fitty City this morning. We have to climb to 3,500 feet to climb over the uh, top of the Coromandel Ranges. And no sooner that we've done that, then we have to pull the power off and glide down the other side, basically. Uh, it is a lovely fine day over there at the moment. Like Auckland, they're anticipating uh, perhaps stronger southwesterly breezes later on this afternoon. Uh, we'll give you the opportunity, hopefully, to have just a quick peek at the flight deck. It will depend a bit on what Patrick's doing because uh, he's been operating uh, some camera gear from the jump seat, but the, we'll do the best we can. And for departure here out of uh, Ardmore, the wind's almost light and variable. We might get off on 03, Andrew. There's not much in it, is there? Depends whether uh, somebody else is using 21. We'll plan on the uh, southwesterly runway because that's the active vector at the moment. Left turn, and then we'll go down the Clevedon Valley and out across the Coromandel Peninsula. So we're looking forward to seeing some great film, and I hope you're going to have a great day in Wittianga. It's our airfield of choice. Lovely big long grass runway. It's got a good cafe back in the Mercury Bay Aero Club. The restaurants downtown are superb. Our uh, recommended venue is stoked, but there's plenty of other options as well. And of course, if you're keen to go out around the coast a bit to Kautunu or somewhere like that, there's Luke's Kitchen out there and one or two other, uh, you know, rather familiar uh, hostelries, you might call them. 
For boarding, uh, just quickly, one person at a time on the air door, please. It's not designed for uh, mass weight. And if, if you can avoid using the seat backs as a lever to pull yourself up the 11.6 degree incline, that will help us out as well. The front rows have got cameras, so probably that's best avoided. And that's the only row in the uh, aeroplane where the armrests are fixed. The rest of them are all tucked up out of the way, so you can put your bottom on the seat and slide across to the window, and then the armrest comes up for takeoff. Everybody happy with that? You've got free seating. We're not doing uh, seat allocations this morning, so row one's at the front, row eight at the back. Row eights are reserved for our extra flight attendants, and the rest of the aeroplane is yours to uh, see fit. Shall we go? Let's do it. Um, circuit breakers? We're checked. Hydraulic fluid? Is sufficient. Hand pump valve? Is closed. Fire bottles? Engine fire bottles are checked. Hydraulic pressure? In the green. Flaps? Up and the levers neutral. Gear selector? Down, locked, latched and the parking brake is set. Alright, uh, left overhead panel? I'll just do this. Yep. Three on, all off. Master on, engines off. Start on starboard. Fire warning, <coughs> tested. Generators are both on and emergency lights after start. Okay, gyros? Uh, caged. Caged manifold selector. Is normal. Alt static selector. Is normal. Fuel contents. So we're showing 130. 130. Excellent. That's what we put in it. 40. 30. Thank you. Undercarriage lights. We check. Throttles. Set. Pitch. Full fine. Mixture. Idle cutoff. Car peak. Cold and locked. And trims and controls to come. Andy bang is on. Starboard booster. In clear starboard. I'll just turn that off. And all clear starboard we are. Thank clear starboard, yeah. Pressure's rising, hydraulics are good and vacuum's checked. 54. Yep. And all clear on the port side. Oil pressure again. Please. Okay, the after starts Geppens. Geppens are stowed. Uh, mixture. Auto rich. Radio. Masters on. Fuel boosters. Are on. Uh, hydraulics. In the green. Vacuum. Is normal. Gyros. Rect on uh, 055 or thereabouts. Okay. Temperatures and pressures. These are all checked, just the uh, starboard cylinder head temp to come up a few degrees. Transponder. There's a uh, back 4 6. Emergency lights. Uh, right arm. Take off brief. Yours, Andrew. Alright. Thanks, Jess. So any emergencies on the ground prior to 74 knots, we're just going to um, keep the aircraft straight. We're going to stop between 74 and 90 if you consider the sufficient run runway remains. Uh, we're going to stop on the ground. 
Otherwise we're going to take the uh, aircraft into the air. I'll continue flying unless relieved and on my command carry out the um, recall items for the defending engine. Understood. And uh, we'll go out and taxi down uh, Juliet. It's quicker than going across the ground the long way. Yep. I'll just get you out of here, Andrew, while yep. you're doing that, and we're on our way. Traffic Curta 46 crossing threefold 07 grass on the tip. It says here, trims. Uh, one, two, three, is set. Mixture. Is auto rich. Car peak. Is cold and locked. Friction up. Is tight. Pitch. Is full fine. Cox. Left on left main. Right on the right main. The uh, boosters are off and the pressure's not. Thank you. Generators. Are both on. Flaps. Uh, up and the lever's neutral. DI, a rectum case on my side on about 068 or thereabouts. 070. And 070 is Our altimeter is uh, 1015, gives me uh, 80 feet. It's probably 16 now. 16, that gives me about yeah, 90 feet. Hatches and cockpit windows, I'll just hold it there, Andrew. Yeah, mine's uh, closed and locked. Left on the grass and right. More well, traffic, Dakota 46 crossing grass, Victor 219, Julia. Uh, we might just backtrack since there's no traffic and he's the only air aircraft around, Andrew. Yep. Sure thing, we'll clear right. No, 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 no. Traffic Dakota 46 entering to backtrack on the way 2-1 from Julia. My hatch is secure now, yours as yep, well, Andrew. Mine's closed and locked. And the door light is confirmed out. Okay guys, lining up the runway now, super exciting, um, fantastic sound, the volume, can feel it in your, in your stomach, the vibrations of the engines, absolutely fantastic and I'm looking forward to a beautiful flight now, wonderful weather, yesterday was still bad weather, really lucky today, looking forward now. Bit of wind there now? There is. A little bit. I'll just park brakes while you get the uh, rudder right lock. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, controls. So the brakes are on. Oh, right. Thank you. Cabin's clear. We've had the pre-takeoff briefing. Yep. The strobes are on. Landing light is on. The transponder is deck for six out. The rudder lock is removed. The tail lock's engaged. And the landing light is on as well. So we're clear to go, Andrew, up to 30 inches on the brakes. Yep. I'll let the brakes off, but you've got them. Yep. There we go. Cool. All right, let's go. Up on traffic, Dakota 46 rolling runway 21 by Cat, not down the 3 Dakota filming on airclips.com Beautiful, just beautiful. Now we're going straight over the bay. Um, can be seen on the GPS. I'm going to show that to you in a moment. And then on the other side there should be you know another skiing approach waiting for us. You can see uh, Patrick in the distance out over here, the uh, purple in the middle of the valley there. Okay. That's, that's where we're aiming for. Oh, it's super. always a good landmark for us. So Yes, we trust. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Mark on eyeballs is go the young chap. Okay, thank you.
have, have your photoscope more or less direct from yeah, here? Absolutely, or do you yeah, absolutely, yeah. If we just cut Kawa Bay instead yeah. of the, because uh, it'd be a little, little bit of a bay, bay bumps, uh, yeah. Bumps here, yep. yeah. Until 15 miles here on Auckland, then we can climb to two and a half, and then to four and a half. Well, we've got another one in about eight or nine days' time. It's our uh, favourite destination because it's so close. It takes, uh, on a good day, three and a half hours to drive there. You've got to go right down around the peninsula, of course. And on uh, a bad day, it can take five or six hours. Like today, with the holiday weekend, th there's a one-lane bridge at a little place called Tairua, which is just down the uh, eastern side of the Coromandel Peninsula. You could spend two and a half hours just getting across the bridge. Wow, and this is super beautiful here to the right. That's uh, Kawa Kawa Bay down there. And the name of the big bay that is ahead of us? Uh, the Firth of Thames. In here. And it's uh, very busy on the other side with uh, mussel beds. Oh, okay. And all these uh, areas up here to the uh, northern side are uh, great bays for yachting as well, Takoom and places like that. I thought this aircraft was built in 1944, right? Correct, October 44. Beautiful Betsy, how you call her? Ah, uh, Betsy, yeah. <laughs> Here's our... Oh yeah, construction plate 44. Yes, yeah. The other New Zealand DC-3, is, is it older or younger? Uh, AWP, I think I think that's a 42 model to be honest, because that was an original NAC aeroplane. So. Sneak up to two and a half now. Yeah, please do. Yeah, just confirming we're well outside, in fact you can go to two and a half easy. I don't mind, I'll just give you a direct two here, Andrew. There you go, so we can come left back and pimple again. Left turns please, left turns please. Left turns only. <laughs> Which, which aircraft have you been uh, flying before in your aviation? 
aviation career? Uh, well, I, I started originally, I uh, went into the Air Force at the uh, tender age of 16, but, uh, and I wasn't old enough to aviate at that point in time, but my dad, who'd been in the Air Force, and uh, who was at that time uh, occupied with a uh, top dressing company, so aviation uh, was in my blood, so to speak. So I went into the Air Force at uh, 16 old, and I did uh, a training initially as an airframe mechanic, and after I completed that course, I went out on a squadron to a helicopter squadron, three squadron at uh, Hobsonville. And I did uh, about two and a half years there on uh, duty with uh, working doing maintenance on uh, Iroquois and Sioux helicopters, plus we had uh, a Harvard and three Austers as well. Uh, two and a half years, I say, and then I went back to Woodburn and the uh, tip of the South Island at Blenheim there to do my fitters course, which is advanced training. And from that, I went back to uh, Whanuapai into the aircraft maintenance squadron. And I was uh, allocated there to the uh, skin bay. So I've done my time bashing rivets and bending bits of metal and drilling holes, and it's good. And it's coming useful, I can tell you, subsequently. And uh, at about uh, early 1972, I uh, made an application to do a wings course. And I uh, got word that uh, I needed to go on a pre-selection. So I went through that exercise, which was, you know, carrying bits of wood around and tying them together and crossing rivers and stuff like that. And, and it was more about, uh, we might go left a bit, Andrew, and go up through the gear, mate. Sure. Okay, there we go, Jess. Uh, I had to uh, complete that, and from that, uh, we did a bit of uh, work in a, a very uh, aged procedure trainer thing, which just had uh, a joystick which you required to keep a light in the middle of a circle, and rudder pedals, and a couple of handles for a red light and a green light. Well, from that, they came back to me and said, uh, we'd like you to be a navigator. I said, uh, I'm not particularly interested in that, thanks. I, you know, I much prefer to be uh, flying the aeroplane. So they sent me down to Wigram and I did a, uh, a spell on an air tour. Okay. And from that, subsequently about a month later, they told me I was on 772 wings course. So away I went. I went to uh, Wigram and did my wings course. I did about 180 hours on Harvard's, or the 86. And from that, our multi-engine training was on the Havilland Devons. With about uh, 250 hours, graduated there at Wigram and got posted to 42 Squadron DC-3s. Fantastic. How about that? Dakotas, as they were known in the RNZ. So how many hours do you have on Dakotas? Uh, I'm about 2,500 on, on DC-3s. And I did two and a half years on, on the squadron, and then I went off to C-130s, great squadron. I flew around the world in that aeroplane, covered most continents down to the ice, and uh, brilliant pilot platform, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And from there, 1979, after I'd done 12 and a half years in the Air Force, I said, I got wind that the New Zealand was recruiting back then. So I put in an application, and a couple of months later they said your start date is 12th of August 1979 and at that point my release date from the Air Force was about the 16th or something <laughs> so <laughs> there was no that. issue but uh, on advising the Air Force that, or the squadron in particular that I was going to uh, civilian employment I was immediately grounded really they said you'll never fly an Air Force aeroplane again why that uh, well, it was just the attitude on the squadron at the time. I just, yeah, I just got to make a couple of calls here, Patrick. Fitting anchor traffic, Dakota 46, DC3, we're 10 to the west at 3,500, joining down the left hand runway 22 to land.
That's yeah. it. One, one overhead going down one. Yep. The, uh, we Very just have to run these. Uh, at the the six, please. Altimeters. Uh, let's use 1016, Andrew, and I have three and a half thousand. Three and a half. No, I'll just do the cabin signs here too, since we're getting a bit. Alright, folks, uh, check the top of the seatbelt sign on again. We're just going over the top of the Coromandel, just where we get our thermal. So, pop the seatbelt on and uh, we'll dive down. And uh, we're landing at Wesleyan in the Jiffy. Yeah, Number 1 at Cooksby. Yeah, 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 Right Ox is showing 50. Thank you. And Cox left on left main. Right on the right main. Boosters are off. And Christian all. Thank you. Mixer. Auto Rich. RP. Is cold and locked. Heater heaters. Off the top of the clock. Sit out no smoking is on. Landing light is on. And we're waiting for a cabin clearance and the wheels. Thank you. And you can see the airfield down here. Patrick. The grass vector in the middle of the... Ah, beautiful. We come in over the water? We do, we go out and come back back and land on the uh, southwesterly deck here. It's a gorgeous place, it really is, fabulous. And we are on a uh, uh, tricky tour on the scenic, we'll come up here to Matarangi and Wangapua Harbour, but out round the coast, Opito Bay, and number one, gorgeous. Fitting anchor traffic, Dakota 460 C3, just coming through the extended center line out of 3000, joining down with left hand runway 22. Yeah, so uh, the Air Force said to ground it. And uh, with that, I, I, I could give them uh, six months' notice to get my full benefit. And with that, I changed my release to three months. And the boss said, Why would you do that? It costs you a lot of money. And I said, Well, I'll soon recoup that. In the job I'm going to, so and if I'm not allowed to fly, why am I going to stay? True. And in fact, I did then went and did some research in the airboard, Air, Air Force airboard orders, and found out that they were uh, responsible for keeping me uh, current on any qualifications I had, ah. and to introduce me back into civilian life. Ah, yeah. So I went to them and said, my HPL subjects are here. And I need uh, at least 10 hours to keep my commercial pilot's license card at that time. And they relented, and I did a bit of flying. But uh, a few months later, I uh, departed the scene, and nobody said thanks for your 12 and a half, 13 years of service or anything like that. So it was a bit of a bitter taste, bitter sweet taste, really, but especially since I'd flown a gorgeous aeroplane, the C 130. Thanks, Jess. For the younger traffic, Dakota 460 C3 on the downwind left hand, one by 22 out of 1800. And this is Cook's Beach here, Patrick, in front of us. Cook's Beach? Cook's Beach, the little, little bay, and then Hahe, and, and all the way down the coast here to uh, Tairua and Pawanui. Uh, fabulous little bays and lots of scenic points down there but we find the northern side is uh, great these are the great mercury islands out here I have the gear down please Jim speed's good match is good gears traveling thank you it's a quarter flat yep I'll just leave the gear go oh, yep. in first it's a bit high so I just give myself a bit of space yeah okay, I'll just lock that first as well thank you just don't make sure I don't bite your arm here thank you and a quarter flat this table. Thank you. And set. Down lock latch and a green light. One of our beneficiaries of this aeroplane uh, passed away some years ago and uh, we scattered his ashes in the bay here out of this aeroplane. We were down and he owned a Miles Messenger and that was flying around beside us. We need to go down just a bit further, Andrew. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Half left. Don't listen to me. Half I seat. normally do. Half a set. <laughs> just trying to get the speed back. Yeah, that's no, right. that's good now, yeah. How are we looking? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And 
they've mowed it. It's all nice here now yep. as well, yeah. Breezier here. Three quarter flat peaks. Three quarter set. There was another aeroplane taking finals before, but I haven't heard of them since. Another full stop. Thank you and uh, fitting anger traffic Dakota 46 DC3 final runway 22 full stop. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of a sour west of down there. Yeah. Maybe a bit more southerly than that. The left, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Two two on two two. Flaps are travelling. So needs another mo. Control yep, and I'll you get you it. to put the rudder lock yep. in, please. You've got it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we just got to go up through the end here. Around the corner into beside the terminal here. Two twenty-four. I might have to just put the Chinese rubber band in. I think Andrew with this one. Okay, guys. Now it's a short turnaround here. A few minutes on the ground. Got to change a few batteries, and then comes already the scenic flight. Looking forward to that. Like our knitting? <laughs>
firstly, can I say our apologies for being uh, late into Fitty City this morning. We didn't know it and there was no notice provided at Ardmore that the petrol tanker drivers were taking the weekend off. And uh, our aeroplane's been parked there for 34 years and we've never had to go around to the fuel pumps and use the, uh, the bug smasher facilities on the other side of the airfield. Well, it so happens, of course, that the hose, as you can imagine, is not long enough to go right across the DC-3. Yeah. So we had to start Betsy up again, turn around, and fill the other tank on the other side. So we lost about, out of that exercise, about 40 minutes, which, you know, was the reason why we're late here. So bear with us. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll get airborne out of here at uh, Fitty City. We're going to have to take off, of course, to the southwest because of the prevailing wind. And in fact, there is a, it's more southerly. There's a bit of a crosswind here at the moment. And then we'll uh, go down over the, the uh, city and out through the bay and we'll go north up to Ongapua Harbour. And for those of you on the right hand side seats, you won't get to see much going northbound of course because you'll only see the, uh, the Mercs and a little bit of terrain as we get up the top end there. Then we're going to swap over and come southbound down the coast and those of you on the right hand side of course will get to see uh, Kautunu and Matarangi and all those good places up the Opedo Bay. So it's a bit of a sharing exercise if you'll bear with us. We'll be about uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes in the air. There are going to be a few lumps and bumps on departure out of here because of the uh, offshore wind as well. And the other thing is that uh, Andrew Cronin here is going to be flying you today. So blame Andrew for anything that uh, is not to your satisfaction. We have with us today uh, Patrick from Hamburg. And as I explained to the people in uh, Ardmore, he's been tested five times, been in isolation, MIQ and isolation, and had his fifth test <laughs> yesterday morning. And he's going home to Hamburg tomorrow and he'll have another one. So he very kindly explained to us that his nostrils are now, you know, about three sizes bigger than they were when he arrived. And his uh, exercise here currently is that he runs air clips and he does a lot of filming inside the flight deck of aeroplanes and, and on all sorts of different, all with different airlines. And he's been uh, through the ringer here in Auckland, has hardly sat still. And in fact, he finished at about, what, nine o'clock last night? Yep and we picked him up at seven o'clock this morning and it's taken about uh, two and a half hours to get the aeroplane set up and unfortunately there are well I shouldn't say unfortunately but we'll ask you to bear with us there are some cameras on the uh, passenger windows one in the front row and one in row seven and on the, it's on both sides so if you'll just uh, bear with us it may be a bit of an inconvenience but we're just trying to keep uh, Patrick in a job so that he doesn't go home and have to eat Corn, beef and cabbage. <laughs> How many of you first time flyers in a DC-3? I don't believe it. <laughs> really amazing. Because remember back in the good old days, uh, with NAC had 26 of these aeroplanes that would move people all around New Zealand. But more importantly, at one stage, the global air transport was 95% of these aeroplanes. And dear old Betsy here, this one, never saw uh, wartime service as such. She came out of the factory in Oklahoma in 1944 and from there went into the Army Air Force as it was known back then and migrated uh, through to Japan and Korea and spent most of her time up in that area. She didn't have any bullets fired and anger at her as far as we know except maybe when she was disbanded she went to Philippine Airlines and then down a bit further south into Papua New Guinea or um, Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea and flew there for some considerable time with uh, uh, several different airlines. From there, back to Australia and uh, she flew with Bush Pilot Airways and Air Queensland there and then in 1987, 86, 87, uh, the museum in Mackay went into liquidation and this aeroplane was put up for tender. Just conveniently at the time, New Zealand warbirds had just formed and they got word from a uh, colleague across the ditch and he said, mm, have a look at this little snipping. And this aeroplane was up for tender. Well, the guys, five or six of them got together and put their hands in their pocket and put in an offer and believe it or not, they won it. Anyone want to hazard a guess? What, what would you pay for a DC-3 in 1987? It was, it was operational, didn't, hadn't done a lot of flying, but it, it was uh, serviceable as such, fit to fly. $72,300. Wow. 
They, uh, a group of pilots, ex-NAC pilots, went across with the engineers, of course. They checked the aeroplane out. They did a little bit of work. They changed the tyre and changed the carburetor, put some gas in it and flew it back to New Zealand. And it arrived or flew straight into Christchurch. And then from there, it went northbound to Masterton, where it underwent a uh, change of colour scheme into the D-Day colours. And it had a bit of work done. At that point in time, the syndicate was 20 strong and they then had to uh, beef it up to 50 because overnight the cost of the, re the repairs and the paint broke the syndicate essentially. Yeah. So it was painted in the D-Day colours. This livery was put on in 2000, late 2006. The D-Day colour scheme had got a bit tired. And the other thing was that the uh, syndicate then was known as the Warbird Dakota. And some of you will appreciate the fact that the connotation of a warbird these days doesn't sit too easily with everybody. So we had a bit of a vote and decided uh, what livery we should put on the aeroplane. And out of the choice of NAC and the Air Force livery, we found out that, believe it or not, in New Zealand didn't own the rights to NAC. Oh, wow. A private guy, in fact, one of our pilots, his brother at Ardmore, owns NAC. So he said, oh, paint it if you like. But at that point in time, Air New Zealand had actually offered to strip and paint the aeroplane for us. And when they heard about this going into NAC livery, they said, get out of here. <laughs> so with that, we decided on the Air Force and uh, the Chief of Air Force back then gave us uh, full permission and authority to do this uh, livery. And on top of that, they gave us all the drawings and paint oh. specifications, a whole lot. So. That was done in, uh, finished in March of 2007. And as the aeroplane, it was done at Palmerston by Field Air, who are our, our, our maintenance providers. And after completion, we flew across to Ahaki and landed there. And uh, 42 Squadron, who are the operators of the DC show over, over at Ahaki back then, put on morning tea for us. So it was all quite a, a ceremonial dispatch, you know, when it came back to us in this colour scheme and we've uh, had nothing but good rapport from people say it looks good and back then of course Auntie Helen would have put it back on the register in the Air Force if she could. <laughs> uh, can I ask you please on boarding if we could only have one body at a time this East Air door was put on after the aircraft was built it was done by Philippine Airlines to give them independence so they could operate anywhere and not have to look for stairs and steps but it's only designed for one adult at a time and for those of you and me like me wearing hats be very careful as you go through the door if you look up carefully you'll find, see some of my grey hair stuck in there <laughs> well that's where it hits you about across the brow here who's going to be at the door today Jessie? Jessie's going to be there and she'll be saying mind your head for those of you that are a bit taller so you have been warned. with you Andrew. Hello. And uh, I'll just run through these sure. this time then thanks. Three on, all off, master on, engines off, start on starboard, fire warning was tested but there it is again. Jenny's are both on, emergency lights after start. All right, gyros. Are caged. Manifold selector. Is uh, normal, alt stat is normal. Fuel contents, been through this, so we're showing 100, 110, 40, 30, Q. undercarriage lights, we're checked, and throttles, set, pitch, full fine, mixture, idle cut off, car peat, cold and locked, trims and controls to come, here we go, anti bangs on, a booster pump, clear starboard, 
and turning. Official hydraulics and such and again. And go ahead with the after starts, please. Starts the Gibbons. Master A. Mixture. Little Rich. Radio. Masters on. Fuel boosters. Are on. Hydraulics. In the green. Thank you. Chris Chief. Gyros. Rick Duck Cage. And what have we got up there about 07? Just a bit over 07. Yep. Yeah. Chips and uh, temperature pressures. This way down the CHTs. Prince one back. Uh, that's on deck for six out. Emergency lights. Uh, our arm. Take off brief. Yours, Andrew, again. And okay. I'm happy with the standard so brief. So, 7490, yep. I'm coming in there. Cool. And we've just got to bear in mind that it's uh, got a cross control there. Yeah. And it's a grass vector as well, of course. So, sure. we'll make sure we use all the runway. Yeah. And uh, good 30 inches on the brakes as well. Yeah, yeah. sure. We might take this rubber band off, Andrew. Yep. So that we're Yeah, with this one here. So more. And a left turn out. It's a left hand circuit. Won't, oh, nice. Won't you be loving that? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, guys, just for you to know, uh, we are joking about the left hand circuit because um, we have on the right wing to a uh, camera facing the aircraft, so it looks particularly nice when you do the, uh, the left turn. And this is why I asked uh, Jeff and Andrew before, you know, guys, just if you have a choice, which way you turn, if you need to move the aircraft into another direction. If you have the choice, left turn would be great. And since then, we are always making left turns all of the time. But so far, I really do believe it's coincidence, but really, really nice whatsoever. So um, it's a full house now. Um, right now, there's another aircraft on downward coming into land, so we have to wait for that. And um, yeah, it's almost uh, 30 passengers. Let me just ask, how many POD do we have? Uh, 30 passengers plus five. Uh, 30 30 34 POD, yeah, four. Thank you. So 34 people on board, full house, and um, yeah, once the other aircraft is gone, we can uh, taxi all the way um, down the runway. And you have to have a look. Um, you have to have a look at on the right side, our right side, as we taxi down. There are marvelous houses right next to the garden, right uh, ending up in the runway. You want to start a gradual slow taxi? Yep. You have control brakes on this. Delta to Romeo, deck for six. We're just starting a gradual taxi from the uh, terminal. And for the anger traffic, Delta four six DC three, leaving the terminal at uh, for the anger four back track to zero four four departure off two two. So he's going to use this entrance here, is he? Uh, he'll go through the first one probably. And 
free take off checks, please. It says here, trims. Uh, we've got one, two, three set. Fixture. That is what I rich. RP. That is cold and locked. Fixture. It's firm. Pitch. It's full fun. Fuel contents. Uh, fuel contents. So we've got, it's important, we're sort of showing 110, 120, 30, 20. Thank you. And uh, Cox left on left main. Right on the right main. The boosters are off. And pressure's not. Generators. Are both on. Flaps. Uh, up. Levers neutral. DI are acting caged on about 040. It should be. Or 035 thereabouts. Let's check. My side, yep. My side as well. AH. AH is uh, erect and uncaged. Thank you. Uh, altimeters. Using 1016, about 40 feet, that's good. Let's check my side. Hatches and cockpit windows. I think it's closed and locked. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, Pawanui, just down, 30 miles down the road, is the same with lots of aeroplanes and hangers you know the same thing ah oh, yeah it is for some people yeah this is a, uh, actually owned by the Mercury Bay Aero Club so it's privately owned airfield Uh, he's a, a beaver pilot, ex, ex Air New Zealand flight engineer is with me as well, yeah. So he's Lovely. flying the seaplane or? Uh, no, the, the beaver, I've, I've got a share in it as well, the beaver and Ardmore, the red one. Oh, okay. Yeah. They could mow the rest of it down here, couldn't they? Yeah. I'm alright coming off into the longish stuff. Yes, yeah, around. yeah. Shall I go beyond the marker boards and turn uh, around? Turn around in front Actually, of them. I would turn this side of them in yeah. fact. Yeah. There's a weed circle there. Yeah. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Okay, the uh, hatch is cooked at windows, I'm secure. Yep, mine is uh, closed and locked. And the door light's checked out, and the uh, controls. Uh, rudder lock coming out, you've you got it on the brakes? Yep, I have. Da. And the controls are back. And you've got that, yep, you've got the brakes now. Yep, i got the brakes, controls are full and free. Thank you. Cabin's cleared, T take off brief we've had, strobes are on, manual light is on, transponder is deck for six, tail lock is engaged, the rudder lock is removed and a landing light is on, confirmed. The cool. lineup checks are complete. Alright, you all ready? Yes sir. 07. And 30 inches. Please.
might just leave a bit of power on there for a minute. Pedo Bay? Yeah, around, up, yeah. Up around the point here. Yeah. I think we might keep the punter strapped in, to be honest. And the after takeoff checks are complete, the aircraft is clean. Which way we go, north no. or south? Should I go a bit higher, do you think? Yeah, 1500 I think or two might smooth it out a bit? Or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Probably. I was thinking a thousand, but she might be a bit lumpy, eh? Yeah. It's a beautiful scenery down here, Patrick. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. There's a uh, beach just down around the corner, hot water beach, so there's warm water down there. And there's uh, Cathedral Cove, which is very uh, well known. There's a gorgeous place where you can go swimming in the hole and, you know, in the cave and the gorgeous. So uh, where did we start? Where did we stop in your, in your career? Yeah, so. when I left the Air Force, yeah. <laughs> Still yeah. a few he has to work through. Yeah, and uh, just coincidentally, when I resigned, uh, the next day I went and I was told I'd never fly again. I said, well, I'd, I've got some leave owing, so I'd like to take a, a week's leave immediately. And they said, fill your boots. Well, uh, another pilot on the squadron and I and our wives, we all went down to... Uh, Lake Taupo to Mocho Opa to their batch and we'd only been there 24 hours and there was a knock on the door and it was a policeman in uniform and he said are you Jeff Cooper and I said yes I am and he said well uh, I've just been phoned by your squadron and uh, you're required to get back to Whanuapai and I said no chance of that I said they told me yesterday I would never fly an Air Force aeroplane again and he said, well, the Cook Strait Ferries have gone on strike and you're required to get back to Whanuapai. And he said, if you don't go voluntarily to the nearest, because no cell phones in those days, to the nearest phone booth, I will personally escort you, arrest you and escort you there while you make the call. <laughs> so we went down the road and rang the squadron and spoke to them and they said, you need to get your bum back to Whanuapai. There's a C-130 at waiting there for you, you're to land at Ahaka and pick up a loader for the pallets, a K-loader and then fly to Woodburn and you'll be uh, shifting people and cars across Cook Strait for how many days we don't know. So we said, oh that's interesting and, and I said, mentioned to the guy that rang me who subs subsequently came to the Chief of the Air Force and I said to Virgil Berry, I said, what's going on here? I said, I was told yesterday I would never fly an aeroplane again. And I heard the boss in the background say, you tell that airman if he doesn't get back here, it'll be a court martial. This is Pedo Bay here, Patrick. Gorgeous. This is where some of our passengers have come. Wow. Mitchell traffic, Dakota 460, C3, just coming round past the Pedo Bay northbound at 1800 feet. Uh, looking out the window, uh, 
So we went back to I we both I went back to Fenopai to a home and the next morning I got up and went to Fenopai and I said, I wonder where the fox is, Jeff Romerall. And finally we managed to track him down. And he'd stopped off at a mate's wedding on the way home. And when I finally got a hold of him I said, Man, you're in deep trouble. You've got to get your bump to Fenopai as fast as you can and we've got to get it southbound. Well, well, when we got, we did get airborne and we went into a hut and picked up this kale over. When we landed at Woodburn, the bloody props had hardly stopped turning on the old herc and the crew door, the entry door opened and the squadron commander walked in the door and came up to Jeff Romerall, the fox he was called, and said, you, uh, orderly officer, for the next six months. Every day. <laughs> yeah, with that, uh, you know, there was a bit of a uh, sour atmosphere around the place. Up the other side. Uh, yes, yeah, it's stunning, and uh, there's some gorgeous photos here. Opportunities for the uh, the hole in the rock. Thank you further, we'll get one on the way back. Oh, you'll get it on film anyway. Absolutely, gorgeous. The actress gets everything on film. Yes. Is this Kautuna here, isn't it? Uh, just up around the next the point. The next, next yeah. one. What's this one here? I do know that one. It is called... I've stayed in there. It's magic. One of the New Zealand adverts was filmed. The rope swing under the beat, on the, under the... Um, ah, yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'll think about that one for a second. Kautuna's up where these houses are. Yes, oh, yeah, I can see yeah. Luke's, Luke's kitchen at this end. Yeah. yeah. So with that, I left, I left the uh, Air Force under a bit of a, a sour note. They did condescend to give me 10 hours to keep my licence current. And I did do a little bit of flying. I went to Fiji a couple of times. And, oh, nice. But there was nothing much in it. And I went off into the uh, Air New Zealand. So they just changed then. It was NAC back in October the year before, but August 79, it was Air New Zealand. And I started on the old good old Dutch butter box. <laughs> How did you call it? Dutch? The Dutch butter box it was called affectionately known as. If we come out just a little bit more, mm -hmm. just so that the wind tip cameras are uh, getting the... Uh, the F-27 and back then in New Zealand had uh, the 100 series and some of the original F-27s and uh, a little bit later on we got F-27 500s and 500C, the cargo version with the big door. Uh, from there I did, uh, I flew that for a little while and then I did my uh, 737 right hand seat for only about 12 months and then on I... On the nice classic, back to 200s. Yeah, on the classic, you know, without the sea anchors originally too, so they had straight pipes. <laughs> And I did not very long on that, and then I went back on my uh, friendship car. And Peninsula Traffic, Dakota 460 C3, just coming up again, Matarangi at 1500 feet northbound, shortly to make a 180 back southbound. Yeah, so uh, I did, did uh, left hand seat in the friendship and, and a little bit of time as a training captain on that as well. And then I went off to the uh, 767 and I flew that for some time and did, uh, I think I did two, yeah I did two tours on the 767 and then I went to the 747 200 as a ah. first officer and I did four years on that and then I went back and did my 737 command and I wasn't on that very long when my 
uh, seven six command came up. So uh, they didn't lock me on because we had two year lock ons for any conversion course. I was about ten days short or something like that. They said, "Oh, we wouldn't do that," but for some people they would. And from the uh, seven six, I did. Uh, I don't know how many years on that now. It was I did nearly. I think it was ten years. Ten years, nearly. Uh, just over 9,000 hours on the aeroplane. Turn it left for the cameras, of course, Jim. Yeah. Thinking about the, uh, yeah. Well done, Andrew. Thank you. This beach here is called New Chumps. And it's, uh, well, I think it's one of the nicest beaches in the country. Traffic Dakota 46 DC3 Fogapua Harbour uh, at 1300 feet down, and now tracking southbound back down the coast to Opidova. Yeah, so uh, I did you know, 10 years on the 76, and then the I could have gone to the uh, 400, but I elected to stay when the uh, announcement of the 777 was initialised. And uh, with that, we did our conversion course, and then we went back on the 76 for about five months, I think it was, because the aeroplanes hadn't arrived then. And then we uh, did our training with our Boeing people at, in New Zealand, our route flying. Uh, on the 777, the, we were all training captains off the, and check captains and instructors off the 76 that went, went on to the initial training on the 777, obviously. So we did that, and I was on the uh, the triple seven for uh, ten years as well. I mean, out of those many aircraft that you've been flying, which one is your favourite? Ah, oh, the triple seven, without, without, yeah. You know, it had uh, it went to all the right places. It was had a ton of power. It was super good aeroplane to fly, you know, with Autoland, Cat 3B, and, and it carried, especially the 300, believe it or not, carried more freight across the Atlantic than the 74 did. And we went to all sorts of good places, you know, South America, and Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, Bang, uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and of course we did uh, East Road. Frankfurt, you know, my, my variety of flying with the airline was uh, pretty pretty good. We covered every domestic airfield in the country on the F-27 and 737. 76 had a good route structure, you know, we did Korea, uh, Brisbane, Taipei, uh, Vancouver, Honolulu, LA, and that, that was a good route structure as well. And the uh, 400 was a uh, 747, 200 was a bit of a bore, you know. We just did the UK basically, LA, uh, occasionally Honolulu or Vancouver and Tahiti. But it was mainly we did three month uh, uh, basings in LA, and Jesse came up for one of those. And we stayed at uh, over at the beach at uh, LA on the western side there. And uh, went to UK and Frankfurt, and we had some big tours. You know, we sometimes went to uh, the UK or Frankfurt for seven days. So we used to get around. You know, we, we did a lot of time on ferries and rail cars and railways. And these are the great perks out here. Peninsula traffic Dakota 460 DC3 just approaching a pedo bay northbound 1500 feet and we're en route via the bay back to 57. So I had a good career as I say I did I didn't do much work on the 747 200 uh, in four years I did only about uh, 1400 hours and the 
the first year I was on the fleet, I did 43 days at work. The next year, the next year I did 39 days at work. So, and Amazing. you never ever got uh, to fly a takeoff or a landing, a uh, takeoff and a landing. And in fact, when we went into the simulator, we quite often had to do three, three circuits, landings, to get current before we could do the exercise. So there wasn't much flying in it, and a lot of the guys had uh, secondary jobs, you know, they were firemen and all sorts of things, cabinet makers. And if we just uh, track through here a bit, and you'll get the whole of the rock here. Oh, yeah. Down here with the... Ah, yeah. Oh, the left rocker as a well. whole? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, you can see through it. it. Yeah. Is there a boat down there? On the other side of this, yeah. yeah. And so I flew, like I say, Patrick, I flew the 777 through to retirement and on our, my retirement trip, which they don't get now, I was able to pick my handpick my crew and I was able to handpick where I wanted to go. So I took Jesse uh, t through, to, we went through to London via LA and my first officer was a good friend of mine who's still flying the 787 and he took his partner and my second officer was an ex-Air Force guy and he put his uh, wife as well so we had six of us and boy we had a ball and I, I, they didn't spend anything, I shouted them the whole way around so all their meals and booze and, and on that exercise when we got to uh, London Heathrow we went off uh, Binty as my second officer was the Officer IC of the vintage flight in the RNZAF and he organised for us to go out to the BBMF in, uh, out in the UK at Connington. You can see it now, look, the hole through the bottom. Just sit forward a bit, Andrew, sit forward a bit. Gorgeous, isn't it? Connings, Coningsby, and we got a, a three hour guided tour by the OC of the squadron there. And the whole fleet was in the hang of it because it was winter time and they were all on maintenance. So all the Spitfires, the Lancaster, we crawled all through the Lancaster. Jesse had a boot boot on and we all set up the flight there. And the, the Goonie Bird tour course and the Hurricane, the whole lot was there. So it was a great trip. Sounds good, yeah. And we had two days in London, we had three days in LA on the way home. So, And when we arrived back at uh, Auckland, I, unbeknown to me, my First officer had organised, I got an ACARS message from air traffic control saying, Congratulations, welcome on your retirement. And when we landed at Auckland, we got a, again a fire, fire engine salute. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah so it was, and, and there was a good uh, meeting committee too, you know, one of our big bosses was there, and, uh, our, our lady in the office was there, and it was a good turnout. And from LA home, Jesse's twin sister, who was a flight service manager, was, was on the crew. <laughs> so we had a ball, yeah. We had a ball. And uh, Jesse was flying as a uh, flight attendant for New Zealand? Uh, she did from about 1986 to 95-ish. And then she, uh, she was a, originally an uh, intensive care nurse, critical care nurse. And then she went flying and then Ruth went flying after Jesse. Uh, Jesse uh, gave up and did uh, sports massage therapy and aromatherapy. So and she's still got that business today back home. Well, we need to interview you on your flying career as well, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, here we go. I'll just let it go. Fitting a traffic to put a 460 C3 on a long final with the bay at uh, 1200 feet, joining the way 22 to land. It says how tight it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, we are uh, heading back towards the Wipianga. And for those of you who ask, yes, we are flying at 12,000 feet. I should have brought the locals up here on the PO to, to uh, talk about what we see. And, um, when we do our scenic flights, we sometimes go down to Kawanui. Uh, but our preferred one of choice is actually to come back up this way. Uh, we just think it's absolutely beautiful. And for those of you who live here, we are so in here. So I think this one is the most beautiful, beautiful parts of uh, the country. If not, 
Left on left main. Right on right main. Boosters are off. Pressure's normal. Just mix you. That's what I rich. Car heat's cold blocked. Peter heaters off not required. Seat belt no smoking is on. Landing light is on. And we're waiting for cabin clearance and the wheels. Cool. And speaking of the wheels, get down please. That'll save that horrible graunching sound. Yep. Here we go. Here's travelling speed match. Quarter flat, please. Quarter flat, please, travelling. Some beautiful homes here, Patrick, all around here. If one of the uh, Mercury Bay Aero Club guys has got a gorgeous home here that's in the shape of Twin Peaks. And he's got a lot of marine gear. He's a good, very good uh, sailor. He's an aviator and he's an accountant. But, uh, beautiful home. And half foot, please. Half is traveling. Here he is down here. See that car moving there? Yep. The Twin Peaks? Yep, that's his house there. Oh, nice. Three quarter flat, please. Beautiful inside. It's all beautiful timbers and stunning view here. And it's got lots of uh, marine ornaments in there. Fitting in traffic to cut a 4 6 is uh, short finals to land on way 2 2. And full flat, please. There we go. That's it, Andrew. I can't give you any more than that, but I will retract on touchdown. Thank you. Yeah, we're just a bit heavier this time too, of course, yeah. so I'll take a bit more stopping. We got down a couple of times there. Yeah, we've recurrent all in one hit. A couple of landing fees, yeah. Yeah, yeah when it uh, comes down the second time, I just need a light check forward to get Yeah, it sure was, there. yeah. Yeah. I've seen enough videos of that, I should know better. Down the 
down to 32 miles. Got to have control, get the red lock in. Thank you, I have control. You got it. hole in the right hand side again. Actually I'll put some holes up in here and put some locks in as well. Yep. What was the takeoff time that one? 08? 08. Uh, good afternoon everyone, you know, uh, Jesse and myself, uh, Jeff, uh, we're members of the Fly DC3 Syndicate New Zealand and we're currently here at uh, Wittianga Airfield which is on the Coromandel Peninsula on the northeastern coastline of New Zealand. Our uh, exercise today, if we could call it that, was to uh, bring a, a bunch of passengers over here for a bit of enjoyment on not only our aeroplane but for the uh, excitement of having a bit of time uh, in Wittianga itself as well. Uh, just to give you a bit of an insight into our aeroplane, it's uh, affectionately known as Betsy and we have a, uh, a principle of when we arrive first thing in the morning we say morning Betsy and uh, when we leave last thing at night we give her a tap on the door and say good night Betsy as well. The uh, favourite uh, livery that we could choose was this uh, Royal New Zealand Air Force one. We've subsequently uh, benefited largely from that and that uh, with the more corporate image uh, people ha don't have any apprehensions about uh, flying on a warbird which is not quite so easily or readily accepted today and the other thing is that uh, we're very welcomed at uh, all the major air shows in New Zealand and particularly anything that's happening at the Air Force bases as well and that happens uh, on quite a regular basis so we think we've benefited largely from the, the uh, change in our image. The aeroplane itself was uh, born out of Oklahoma at uh, Tinker Air Force Base in uh, late 1944. It uh, didn't see any wartime service being that late into the, off the production line 
but it did spend some time military-wise with the United States Army Air Force and then it migrated up into uh, Okinawa in Japan and a bit of time around Korea as well. Uh, when the time came for it to be disbanded from the military in 1959, it was taken over by Philippine Airlines and became their uh, flagship and in fact uh, flew their international sector from Manila to Hong Kong. So it does have some history and I can assure you that at times when the aeroplane has uh, been dismantled and checked, we have in fact found uh, PAL plates, Philippine Airline plates, on parts of the uh, metal structure. Uh, from Philippine Airlines it migrated south into uh, Papua New Guinea where it flew with several different airlines over a period of years and then it migrated across the Arafura Sea into Australia and spent some time there with Bush Pilot Airways and Air Queensland as well. It finally uh, ended up in the uh, museum at Mackay on the uh, west coast of Queensland, on the east coast of Queensland. And at that point uh, it did a little bit of flying but at the end of the day uh, the museum unfortunately went into liquidation and the aeroplane was put up for tender. The aircraft itself has done about 43,300 hours, which is middle of the range compared to the, the youngster at just a little over 3,000, and the oldest flying DC-3 still with over 91,000 hours. We operate it on a, a voluntary basis, uh, or as we call ourselves, unpaid workers. The uh, syndicate has uh, quite significant numbers in the uh, sense that those that are on the uh, syndicate ownership papers are uh, numbered but the operation and the um, maintenance and ma uh, general well-being of the aeroplane is up to a, a group of people of what have we got Jess? 10, 12 people 15, perhaps. 16. Mm. And that involves of course a lot of work for those of us uh, in particular the fact that we're a, a full registered air transport operator with a, an AOC which was renewed just a few months ago for the next five years and that's uh, quite a responsibility in that the uh, interviews for fit and proper persons and the like and all the uh, appropriate uh, paperwork is, is quite intense and uh, we think it was some kudos in fact that we were able to get it renewed again this time around for, for another five years a maximum period. Um, all of our cabin crew uh, they've had previous well of course training on commercial airlines so most of our cabin crew are from Air New Zealand either current or former. I'm a former Air New Zealand crew member and I flew from the 737s, F27s right through to the 767s and the 747, 200 and 400. Um, again um, a lot of our cabin crew um, have many many years of experience working in first and business class so we can uh, we get fantastic charters here and we can have crystal and champagne and canapes and it's really nice or we can take it really really casual so um, we offer a range of different uh, charter experiences. The cabin crew we all get on really well and I would say that the cabin crew and the pilots we all are really friendly, we're, we're close, we share a lot of um, experience, um, a, a lot of knowledge but we are close and um, we, we all love going away together. So we do love these uh, uh, days away together and uh, one of our little um, gifts to ourselves is to have a lovely uh, cooked lunch at one of the restaurants on these particular days. At this time, Easter, we should have been down in the South Island for a big air show, but that's been postponed a little bit, but that's usually our biggest uh, trip of the year by going down to the air shows. So perhaps we should show you around our aircraft. Come with us, Patrick. So, uh, as it's no secret, the uh, aeroplane, of course, has uh, two Pratt & Whitney 1830-92 radial engines with some uh, 1,200 uh, horsepower, twin-row, 14-cylinder uh, engine and uh, a fully feathering and uh, constant speed propeller of course fitted on the front as well. Underneath us here on the uh, main side of the uh, fuselage 
the uh, retractable undercarriage, which is a, a rather unique system in that it not only has a uh, hydraulic lock, it has a geometric lock, and it also has a physical metal spade lock as well. So it's pretty hard at any point in time to be ham-fisted with this aeroplane and never get it to retract the wheels on the ground. And of course, while it's parked at night, it also has undercarriage locking pins inserted as well. So it really was very uh, ingenious in those days that they would think to build uh, an almost fail-safe system. Certainly not what you would see in a modern aeroplane today. The undercarriage also, you may have noticed when the DC-3 is in the air, is not fully obscured into or hidden away in the wheel well. And it was designed as such so that there was uh, sufficient wheel hanging below the aeroplane and below the uh, propeller arc so that in the event of uh, a wheels up, you know, through damage or uh, incapacity or whatever was the case, or perhaps having to land it in an airfield or on a, a piece of ground that was not suitable for landing with the wheels down, you could actually land this aeroplane with the undercarriage retracted and do minimal damage to it, provided of course you weren't running into big boulders and stuff like that. The uh, centre fuselage in the aeroplane is uh, part of the uh, main structure and you can see looking uh, behind the propeller blades here that the outer wings of course are joined on this uh, rather substantial wing joint here and a lot of people often ask us, I wonder how many uh, bolts there are that attach those wings to uh, the centre section. And if you can remember the number of days in a year, you've got the number of bolts that are around the uh, wing joint there. And of course that's uh, symmetrical on both sides. So the other advantage about this aeroplane is that uh, most or a lot of the uh, important flying controls are interchangeable, and particularly the elevators uh, can be taken off and just flipped over and the drain holes reorganised and they just bolt straight on on the other side of the aircraft. So it was again very cleverly manufactured. And the other uh, point that a lot of our passengers raise is I, w I wonder why all the flight controls are fabric covered. Well the uh, simple answer really is that if you think about uh, in the days of this aeroplane there were no hydraulic controls the weight of the uh, flight controls would have been uh, inhibitive to have uh, metal covered uh, control fair uh, outer skins. So what they decided to do was cover them in, in uh, dope covered cotton you might say just like a model aeroplane and the other advantage with that in particular was that with aircraft uh, ACAC fire if uh, shots were taken through the flight controls it would merely punch a hole and go through the other side and do minimal damage as against again a metal covered uh, flight control could possibly uh, do substantial damage to all the structure not only on the flight control but around it as well. Uh, with the, the advent of modern uh, avionics and navigation equipment and uh, even these older aeroplanes we do have the capacity and capability of flying in uh, instrument flight conditions. And you'll notice there's a, a number of aerials and antennas fitted both on the underside of the aircraft and particularly up on top of the fuse lurch as well. And these provide us the capacity to fly uh, an ILS in uh, not so much marginal conditions. We don't have autoland capacity, of course, but we can certainly fly an, an ILS down to uh, Cat 1 minimas. You'll notice the 4.6 here, and the 4.6 is not because it's number 46 in our group of aircraft, it's number one. Um, it's the registration that it had when it was in the Air Force, which was uh, 3546, so ours was 4.6. 4.6, yeah. 4.6. Yeah, and in fact, uh, as a matter of interest for uh, people around the world globally now, they can watch us on flight radar with ADS-B fitted to the aeroplane and our ident is DAC, Delta Alpha Kilo 46, which is uh, part of our registration. And that is also our dedicated call sign for air traffic control. So we're officially known Dakota 46 and DAC 46 on uh, flight radar 24. Uh, this aeroplane if you uh, notice on the side of the, the cowling here and the exhaust system, 
did once upon a time have uh, cabin heating and what would happen of course was the the air getting blown in the tube here would get sucked in ducted around the exhaust and then taken off into a, a fitting which is now blanked off under tubing inside the uh, wall linings of the uh, in a fuselage in the cabin. It has been closed off because the decision was made in New Zealand that uh, being a sort of uh, subtropical country we could afford to take uh, all these uh, obsolete bits and pieces out of the aeroplane and reduce the weight quite significantly. So we do have uh, fresh air which is ducted in through the what we call the sparrow catches up here. So fresh air is ducted in through there and that is fed straight through uh, ducts in the uh, both sides of the cabin and in the flight deck through to punkalovers which are overhead in the uh, aircraft cabin. So in the winter time Jesse has uh, a big bag of blankets, woolly, fluffy, fleecy blankets, and we try and snuggle people up and uh, keep them warm that way. Our motto too, of course, Jess, is... Which one? The, the, we fly low, <laughs> low and, and slow, slow. Yeah. is our motto. So that's our uh, favourite uh, saying, and we generally do it for the benefit of sightseeing. And uh, the other thing is that uh, the aircraft is you know, designed to be down low and, and let people have a good look around. And it gives us the opportunity as well, instead of being uh, navigating on airways up in the uh, higher levels, which we do use periodically on longer uh, sector flights. Uh, it gives us the advantage of being able to ticky tour and have a bit of a look around without worrying too much about air traffic control. The other thing too that we've found apart from doing scenic flights is because New Zealand is basically closed off from around the world, we have so many corporate groups now wanting to charter us. So whether it's coming over here or going and having a very flash lunch somewhere, um, yeah, so we're getting more and more charters, so we're keeping really busy. We do uh, periodically do a little bit of uh, parachute activity. We're able to remove the aircraft door and uh, then we just secure a few of the uh, loose objects around the rear of the uh, cabin seats and the galley and, and, and quite often, or not quite so much today, but in recent years we had uh, Kiwi Blue, the Air Force parachute team, uh, bombing out of Betsy and they really loved it. One of the fun things we, we do with the uh, parachute team for the Air Force is they've particularly fallen in love with our little mascot called Douglas and he's a little fluffy um, eagle. And uh, when they go parachuting at air shows, uh, young Douglas gets stuck into one of the jumpsuits and with his little beak hanging out. And I think the, the highest he's done is just about 15,000 feet. For those of you who uh, are fond of Kiwis, uh, the Kiwi here and the Roundel, that of course is the, uh, the Kiwi for the Air Force. And it's, and it's it, we're proud to be Kiwis and so we're proud to have the, the Air Force Kiwi on the fuselage. Uh, with this aeroplane, uh, Patrick, we're limited to uh, 50 miles, nautical miles from land, so we, we can't uh, fly offshore as such. We're pretty fortunate in New Zealand that uh, most of the terrain that we're operating around uh, covers is covered by that f uh, 100 miles, if you like, from side to side, and including our longest sector for that, uh, for example, is New Plymouth to Nelson. And we can uh, cope with that by uh, flying around the South Taranaki Bight and then Fairwell Spit puts us uh, within cooey of uh, the requirements of not going outside that range. It means we don't have to carry life jackets and life rafts. This is uh, a close-up of that what Jeff was talking about, the fabric covered uh, control surfaces here. So it looks like it's metal but it's not, it's actually uh, cotton and it's very hard to stop little children going like Indeed, that. it's very hard to stop adults, adults yes. coming up and banging it like a drum as well. It's just like the good old days of a model aeroplane with a bit of cotton. The, the modern uh, covering is predominantly seconite, which is a, a fabric again, which is then uh, applied, stitched, doped, and then they, they iron it to give it some tension with a, just a warm iron. The Around uh, by the passenger door, in fact, and up on the top of the tail here, 
is the uh, 42 Squadron Crest. When we arrived at uh, Ohakia after the aircraft was painted in this livery, we were invited to stop by uh, from Palmerston North to Ohakia. It's a flight of about uh, five or six minutes. And the Air Force invited us to drop in and have morning tea. And subsequently, uh, we spent some time there. And in fact, they, they lined up their uh, fleet of King Airs around our aeroplane as well to get some photos. And uh, they were very kindly presented us with the uh, squadron crest. And that's uh, on, on both sides of the fin and currently outside the passenger entry door as well. It was recently replaced because it's been on the aeroplane for since 2007. So we've got new ones up there now and they've uh, I think made of a new material today so they retain their colour a lot better than the uh, previous issues. I particularly like this this view of the aircraft. It's a very solid, very strong aircraft. But as I say to people, it's also most aircraft are known as women. And if you look at the lovely soft uh, shape, it's a very female shape. Um, yeah, very soft but very strong, and that's what a, a good woman is for. <laughs> The, unfortunately, we uh, don't have hangarage for uh, our aircraft at Ardmore Airport, and uh, we do have a, a proper tie-down point alongside the uh, the uh, old control tower on the airfield. And I can tell you that the swallows and starlings love us, and uh, that's evidenced by the fact that they leave their mark on a semi-regular basis, uh, they perch up on the fin, and do their business, and we have to come out more often uh, than once or twice a week to give the aeroplane a bit of a wash before we go flying. We didn't get to it today. I think the birds beat us because we we're on a bit of a, a mission this morning. But the rain, it, it needs to be moved too. The rain doesn't wash it off. So you've got to, to actually stir it to get rid of it. The, uh, after we've been flying, especially in winter, the birds like to nest inside the cowlings. And it's lovely and warm and they set up their little houses in our engines. Yeah there are, uh, just in line with that, several uh, different positions around the uh, aeroplane itself where there are uh, finger holes for example open small spring loaded panels and we've even found sparrows nesting in there with eggs and chicks so uh, we do have a bit of a battle on our hands with the birds there's no question about that and in fact on a uh, in breeding season from about December through to uh, the end of January, it's not uncommon for a starling or a swallow uh, to build a nest in the engine while we're on a turnaround in about 20 or 25 minutes. They'll, they'll build a complete nest. On the other side of the door, you'll notice is our 75th anniversary for 2019. This aeroplane was 75 years old and we decided it deserved a bit of a recognition and we sort of got, we've got to be careful here, we've sort of got some ideas from other uh, DC-3 operators globally, but we mixed and matched and we got one of our pilots, Uncle is a graphic artist, and, and between uh, several of us there were some designs put up and eventually this is what we uh, came up with. So we, we mixed the, the red, the blue and the silver, which is uh, predominant on the aircraft livery of course, and the fact that uh, you know, the aeroplane is 75 years young, we should say, instead of old. And uh, just below us, we might as well uh, give a, a fond word to our sponsors. White House Tavern Trust was very, very good to us over a, a long period of time. Is no longer uh, in operation, unfortunately, because the building and the uh, pub charities as well uh, was constantly being uh, exposed to armed robberies. It was a, a tavern uh, just a few minutes away from our airfield and uh, the decision eventually was that they were forced to close. So uh, the support that we've had in the past, particularly from White House Tavern Trust, is no longer available to us, which is a bit of a shame because we're really dependent, Jess, aren't we, on, uh, you know, grants on funding. and funding yeah. to keep this aeroplane in the air. Our day-to-day -day flying, what the passengers pay, pays for the fuel, it pays for landing fees and things like that. 
but for the maintenance every year we go um, away in winter and we go to the middle part of the North Island here in New Zealand and the aircraft is away for a few weeks for maintenance and that's what we need funding for each year. So uh, it's, it's a lot of money to keep this, this old girl flying and maintained in excellent condition, which is what we want. That's the level we want to work at. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking down the cabin from the uh, forward end, you'll notice that the interior of the fuse dodge is, is very symmetrical in that uh, there are no uh, luggage racks or overhead uh, racks at all. And the aeroplane has had this headlining in the uh, whole time that we've owned it. Is, this is still the original headlining. In behind the wall linings, it has all proper aeronautical soundproofing. It also has uh, fully lined uh, with carpets and the airliner seats that you see fitted there are from a 767. The aircraft uh, had to seek quite expensive approval of course to have these fitted into the floor rails and uh, particularly at the front of the aeroplane you'll notice when you look around and, and face the other direction that the centre aisle narrows on the front row of seats and that's of course to allow the spacing of the, those uh, front row to fit into that uh, slightly narrower area. The aircraft, this aircraft is, uh, has the advantage also of uh, five proper emergency exit and uh, you'll see here one beside the flight attendant which is uh, there only for a real emergency because it's a long way to the ground down out there. Over wing of course uh, the two either side of the cabin the forward one steps out uh, quite easily onto the wing and the back one drops down again quite a little bit further before you can get uh, grounded onto the trail edge of the tailing, uh, trailing edge of the, the wing. When we talked about punkalovers, Patrick this is what we talk about good old uh, days of you know even the old Mori Minor or a few of those earlier vehicles had these sorts of vents. Like a British car. British car yes and uh, that's our air conditioning system. The aeroplane on its last uh, interior inspection which was only uh, 18 months ago was completely stripped, the seats all out, the floorboards up, the headlining was taken out and at that point in time we elected to do uh, all new audio uh, speakers alongside the uh, cabin linings and at that point in time as well because the uh, interior was easy, easily accessed we made the uh, decision to fit ADS-B2, uh, the aircraft, uh, to give us uh, approval then to fly anywhere in the country into controlled airspace. Uh, just a little bit of uh, timely entertainment we have, you know, when we're uh, flying around the, the city in Auckland in particular, it's quite nice to have a bit of Vera Lynn just uh, emanating wartime from music. wartime music in particular coming from the speakers and, and giving people that sort of sense of we are flying back in time. So. Uh, uh, we're fortunate to have had that and that was a part of the entertainment system refurbishment and update uh, 18 months ago. Through the rear here we have a little boys room and a little girls room. Pretty basic. It has an aircraft battery powered, uh, it's more like a, a, a portable toilet for a caravan or the like but it does, it does flush and all that stuff. It has its own self-contained uh, tank under the floor and that gets uh, emptied periodically at places where we won't tell you. A little hand basin in here and of course there's, there's quite a bit of storage in, in various... In behind the galley there's lots there and lots go. of storage. In here where we can get our uh, ladder and bits and pieces and chocks and stuff like that when we go away. We try to uh, minimise the amount of weight back there uh, just purely on the grounds that uh, this aeroplane is, tends to be tail heavy anyway so we have to keep the weight and balance pretty evenly spaced throughout the uh, cabin area. Good size galley here, good size galley bench. There's a lot of DC3s that people say oh, there's just no galley bench space but it's great. We can do meals on here, we can store things underneath here. And uh, we've got up here first aid, uh, just what we call a daily first aid kit. Every uh, airline cabin crew member knows what that is. The big one lives in here. So this is a great big first aid kit. So that's for emergencies and all sorts of equipment in there. PBE, uh, we have that one, fire blankets. Um, yeah, so this is basically our 
galley sort of emergency equipment? So, uh, folks, it's uh, very close to time for us, for our passengers, to uh, come back to the aeroplane, and we're going to uh, get them a uh, nice cool towel to Refresh. freshen up and get them on board, and then we'll be away back home to Ardmore, about another uh, 20 minute flight home up over the Coromandel Peninsula and the Firth of Thames back to our home base. So, if you're thinking about a journey to New Zealand, or a, a, it should be a flight really at some time in the future, look us up. We're on uh, our own webpage, flydc3.co.nz. And of course, we are on uh, Facebook. We are on TripAdvisor as well. And if you'd like to look up some of the airline history, there are photos and information on our website. We trust uh, you have enjoyed the presentation. You know, we've had a bit of fun uh, giving it to you and uh, we look forward to perhaps having some of you come fly with us. And as uh, our motto says, fly back in time and uh, we hope you will be able to do that with us. off, start on starboard, fire warnings tested, generators both on emergency lights after start. Okay, cage gyros. Our cage. Our cage, manifold selector. Is normal. Out static selector. Is normal. Fuel contents. So left main showing 90, right main showing 90. And the right ox is showing 50 and 30 in the left ox. Thank you. Uh, undercarriage lights. Throttle quadrant. Throttles. Set. Oh, shh. A Watch that. Wind. That's the wind. Oh. Okay. You right? Yeah, Thank we you. need that lock back in though, please. Yeah. Big gust of wind. You've, you've got them, eh? Yeah. Wow. There you go. I'll just hold feet on the runners as well, yeah. Uh, where, where are we? Throttles. Set. Pitch. Full fine. Mixture. Idle cut off. Carpet. Cold lock. Trims and controls to come. I'll just kill that. You are. Okay, anti bangs on. Yep. Push the pump. Clear starboard. Thank you. It's funny doing it with the headset, the noises are different, eh?
take off cheeks, trims. One, two, three, seven. Fixtures. This water rich. Car peaked. This cold and hot. Friction nut. This fair. Pitch. Fine. Fuel contents. Check them in, we. We go through that again. We've got 90, 90, 40, 30. Check strobes. Are on. Transponder is on. Tail lock is engaged. Rudder lock. Removed. Landing lights. One to go. Line up checks complete. That's better. Okay, here we go. 30 inches on the brakes. Vanega <coughs> traffic, Dakota 46, rolling runway.
Dakota 46 is downwind runway 22, shortly to turn left and set heading for Ardmore, Padanga traffic. Just go that way, Jeff. You don't get. <laughs> I started down in the South Island. Um, just started off doing a bit of glider towing and scenic flights around the mountains and whatnot. Uh, worked my way into a flying school there and uh, became the CFI. Did a couple of years of that and then um, got my first airline job flying a Jetstream 32. So a 19 seat turboprop based in Wellington. Was it uh, Medivac? No. No, it was just a little charter airline, and at the time, New Zealand Link uh, used us a lot because they to cover their breakdowns or their maintenance or okay. whatever. So it was quite a varied uh, job because it was all over the country. It was just anywhere from Kaitaia right down to Omaru, which is pretty far south. Um, so I did that for 12 months or so, and then I got into Virgin Australia. Uh, at the time was called Pacific Blue. It was based in Christchurch. They had a New Zealand. Um, Air operator certificate and basically a whole setup in New Zealand. So I flew for them for uh, 11 years. Um, started as a as an FO and got a relatively quick command after a couple of years. So I did seven or eight years in the in the left seat of the um, 737-800. So you must be you must have been going to almost every Pacific Island state. Most of them. There's a couple that we didn't go to, um, but I'll get there one day with New Zealand as this story continues. Um, yeah, so a lot of uh, Tasman flying and the Pacific Islands. We did domestic uh, back in the early days, up and down New Zealand, but that didn't last too long. Um, so I did that until a couple of years ago, I got an opportunity to um, join in New Zealand, actually. So I thought about it for a bit, quite a big call going from uh, the left seat, being a captain, to starting at the bottom, being a second officer. Yeah. But um, I did it. And as Jeff was alluding to before, um, I went on the 777, which is an amazing machine. And the route structure within New Zealand, just pretty neat lifestyle. Just a lot of time in Los Angeles, Vancouver, uh, Houston, uh, up to London, Asia. Uh, so pretty pretty awesome aeroplane and a pretty awesome job, really. Sounds good, yeah. Yep. So I did that for 18 months and then COVID came along and um, I'm taking a wee break from it for a couple of years um, and I've just actually been out driving, driving some trucks and now I'm working as a driving instructor but um, incredibly fortunate to be able to do this and uh, fly this machine around with Jeff whenever they let me. Oh nice, yeah. Yeah, um, a lot of my colleagues haven't done any flying since they've been grounded so I'm really really lucky that I can, I can come out and do this. So. That's a bit of a shorter story than Jeff had, but that's pretty much. Yeah, lovely story. Wishing you all the best but then for uh, thank you. COVID to go away and yeah. to recover. Yeah, it's starting to look a little more promising already. It's uh, this, this, you know, still got a fair way to go, but it's starting to look a lot more positive than a lot of people thought it would. Yeah, good. So, so fingers crossed it, it, um, it comes right. So 
which Pacific Island states were, were your favourites? Uh, Vanuatu was oh, really? was my favourite. Loved it, loved it. But it depends on the work. It depends on the roster. If you turn up somewhere late at night and you leave early the next morning, it's never going to be yeah. much fun. We used to go to Port Vila in Vanuatu. Oh, would, I love Vanuatu. And would have a 48-hour layover. Oh, perfect. Have and you it, been downtown in Port Vila? Or? It's pretty much where we stayed. Grand, Grand Hotel. The yeah, one? right yeah. on the water. We used to stay in there. Yeah. With with the balconies overlooking the harbour exactly. and the pool. And I've been living in almost every room there. Oh, have you? And you used to be able to push a button on the side of the building and the light would flash and the water taxi would come and pick you up and take you over to the island. Yeah, exactly. For the sunset beers. But we spent a lot of time in uh, Fiji, Samoa, Tonga. Um, uh, Port Moresby and the Solomons. Okay, yeah, so Solomons. Papua New Guinea. We didn't actually stay in those ones, we just did returns out of Australia. But still quite interesting flying. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean the ports you mentioned like Los Angeles and Vancouver is cool and great but you know you have all these super exotic places in your direct neighborhood and it's really cool for yeah. the perspective of any, any other continent. Yeah, yeah that's true. But after 11 or 12 years of going to them it's, no, it's nice to go to LA or uh, you know Vancouver. Sure. First thing I did when I got to Vancouver is hired a car, went down to the Boeing factory and then went down to Lake Washington near Seattle and had a float plane less than a super cup on floats. Oh, I was just like, yeah, yeah. yeah just magic. Back in, back in Vancouver in time for the beers at six o'clock with the rest of the crew, so it was great. Sorry, with all the cameras going with the uh, orange juices, I should say. Sorry, say again? Oh, uh, orange juices, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no beers, just, yeah, we had no, some no. sparkling waters, you know, yeah. down <laughs> Granville Island. But this is the kind of day we needed for the uh, America's Cup. Would have been amazing to see a decent bit of wind, wouldn't it? It's a bit of a shame in the end, but. Uh, runway 21, the wind's 220 at 17. 20 degrees, 1015 is as you correctly the approach sequence altimeters. Set uh, 1015 and 12. That is a checked fuel content. So left main we are showing 80, right main 85, right ox 50 and left ox 30. Cox. More traffic, Dakota 46, DC3, Wairau River Mouth, 1,100 feet. We will be joining by our long finals for runway 21. Add more traffic. Traffic Dakota 46 Clevedon Township 1100 joining long finals 2 1 seal full stop. So there was a chopper out here somewhere, wasn't there? Yeah. Haven't seen him. Oh, I've got him in sight there. Yeah. He's about 2 o'clock. About our height. Down the levers 
it's neutral, we've got a green light. And square back Thank you. Down left position there. there. Yep. Do you want me to ready with the rudder lock quite quickly? Yeah. Three quarters is set for you. Hard by traffic, Dakota 4 stuck short finals, 2 1 sell, full stop. when you want the flaps up. Yeah, on touchdown, please, always. Yeah. Not the gear, Andrew, the flaps. And I'll take the rudder lock with yep. you, please. Alright, one chance only. Let's go. Yep, it's on. And well done. Seal on hotel crossing uh, 21 grass threshold. Uh, correction 04 grass threshold. 04. Cheap as Andrew. <laughs> I'm just gonna, right. gonna, gonna shut up.
Okay guys, now a super beautiful day is coming to an end here. We've just landed in Ardmore, three fantastic flights. And just before we leave the aircraft, I would like to say a big, big, big thank you to Jeff, Andrew, Jessica and the entire crew for hosting us today. Uh, thank you guys, it was absolutely fantastic. No problem, been our pleasure. You're very welcome, Patrick. Thank you very much. Pleasure and to have you with us. Hope thank you, you. and today. whenever you come to New Zealand, guys, make sure to fly the DC-3 here. Down here is the link, off you go. Bye for now. Thank you very much for watching Eclipse. Bye bye. Bye. Airclips.com